everyone, what's up? It's Francesca here from Small City Plants, and I am glad to be joining you today, even though this is not necessarily the video I had planned. Um, I actually got a new camera, which I'm really, really excited uh, for the video quality that it's going to put out, but it had to go through a return process and an exchange process, so I am recording this today on my phone as I have been with my previous videos, but yeah, I'm really excited to have this new camera for coming weeks. So that means that I'm going to be able to do plant tours, I'm going to be able to do Hoya tours. So like all of these cabinets behind me, I'm actually gonna be able to zoom in and get beautiful focus on some of these plants. So stay tuned in the coming weeks for an instant upgrade in video quality. I'm really excited for that. But even though today is not necessarily the video I had planned, it's still one that I wanted to talk about because one of the goals that I had for creating this channel was to engage with the plant community. And part of that engagement is actually getting maybe some of your advice and maybe sharing some of the less successful stories I have had with plants. So today I'm going to be talking about seven plants that I have really, really struggled with. Some of these plants are no longer in my collection. I have struggled with them so much. So as we go through, if you have any tips or tricks, please leave them in the comments. So I'm going to be starting with a plant that I know that actually a lot of people have struggled with. And I adore this plant. I think it's beautiful. I was so upset that I had to get rid of it, but it was my Calathea orbifolia. So I'll put some pictures up beside me of what a Calathea orbifolia does look like because it is no longer in my collection. But this plant at first grew beautifully for me. It put out those kind of light green, shimmery, almost bluish leaves. And they were so, I guess like the roundness of the leaves is really attractive as well as like the light, like striping and venation on them. They're very attractive plants. And I know that a lot of people stay away from Calathea in general because they find them more difficult. But I actually have quite a lot of Calathea that are doing really well in my collection. And the Orbifolia was no different. It wasn't crisping a lot. It wasn't getting tons of extra humidity. It was only getting some. Bowie's decided to join us. So it wasn't getting tons of extra humidity. It was just getting some, and I was using um, filtered water, not distilled, not rainwater, but also not tap water. And it was growing really well. And then I started to notice this kind of bronze coloring that was coming out off of the leaves. Now, I had always heard that Calatheas were spider mite magnets. I did not realize that the Orbifolia was just a magnet for pests in general. And the Calathea Orbifolia is the first plant ever in my collection to have thrips. Uh, when I looked at the leaves, I saw these little white wormy things, very small, uh, which are juvenile uh, thrips. And I just threw it in the trash. I was like, I'm not dealing with this. Not today, not today. I love this plant, but it's 10 bucks. Um, and I see all these other people growing it and saying how beautiful it is, but I have heard a frequently recurring complaint is about how much of a pest magnet it is. So how do you, if you have a Calathea orbifolia, how do you keep pests away from it? And I'm in Canada, so I do not use systemics. Systemic pesticides are not available here. And either way, they're not something I like to use. I prefer to use kind of beneficials. Now, admittedly, I was not using beneficial insects at the time when I had my Orbifolia, so maybe I should try it again and get some beneficials on there. But if you have any tips or tricks, please let me know because I think this is a stunning plant and one I really would love to try again. Next up, I'm going to talk about the Hoya Bella. So I have uh, never owned the regular Bella. I have owned the outer variegated Bella and the inner variegated variegated Bella. And I'm not going to try and say what like kind of the common names are for those two plants, but really I always get them mixed up. Um, I still have the outer variegated one. I do not still have the inner variegated one. Both of these plants have been more difficult for me. I have find that they are uh, so prone to, people have said spider mites. I did not have spider mites, but they were so prone to flat mites. Um, if you haven't seen this whole kind of 
uproar that's been happening on the internet around flat mites on Hoya. I suggest you look into it. I think Not Dude has like a really good video on what flat mites are and what flat mite damage looks like. But they were destroying my um, Hoya Bellas. And at the time with the inner variegated one, I just gave up. It, it was just in the trash because there was so little left to work with. Unlike other uh, Hoyas when they have flat mites, you might see some markings, you might see some damage, maybe some new growth dies off, but I haven't seen it kill fully established new growth. But on the Hoya Bella, it destroyed established new leaves. They would just like pucker and yellow and just die off. And you can see under like a little uh, loop, I have a jewelry loop or a microscope uh, if you have one of those, I do not. Uh, you can see them crawling around on there. It was gross. So the inner variegated one, I just tossed. The outer variegated one is still having sulfur treatment and it's just, it's not rerooting well. Um, and the thing is, this Hoya Bella is supposed to be like one of the easier Hoyas to have. And it's not one that I necessarily love in terms of the way it looks. But it is one that I always thought, this is a nice plant, like I wouldn't mind having it. It's one of the earlier Hoyas in my collection, but they do not like me. So do you have difficulty with the inner versus outer versus regular uh, Hoya Bella? Because I have found really, I have found them really difficult. Of all of my Hoyas, I have found them really difficult and prone, prone to flat mites. So they are no longer with me. Always leaving us now. Bye, Bob. You gonna curl up? Yeah? What are you gonna do? While he figures that out, the next one on my list is the Hoya Curtisii, and this one I have killed twice. It is one of the first Hoyas that I got because it's available everywhere here. Like you can get it in like almost any store. You can find huge hanging baskets of it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try Hoya. So I will pick up my Hoya Curtisii. And when I picked it up, it looks like this. They're so pretty. Look at these. Like they're, they're pretty plants. It looked full and healthy, like all of these. Uh, within a week, it was just dead. Like leaves falling off everywhere. There was nothing left of it. I don't know how I managed it because as you can see from this greenhouse behind me, I have a lot of Hoyas. I do really well with Hoyas. I can keep them alive and if they don't thrive, I can at least like maintain their state. This is not true of the Hoyer Cuticii. So it went in the trash. And then I waited six months and I had more Hoyas and I was more confident in my collection and my care of Hoyas. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try again. No, no, no. I bought a second Hoya Cruticea. I brought it home and within two weeks, all of the leaves had fallen off and it was empty strands. Now that was very quick speaking, but it was just a nightmare from beginning to end. And I don't know if it's because I can't keep it alive and because I have tainted experiences with this Hoya, but I now don't think it's pretty. I don't think it's pretty at all. I think it's kind of ugly. There. Am I jaded? Maybe, but I am sticking with this opinion. I do not like the Hoya Cruticii. I am not gonna try again. I am not gonna get another one. Goodbye. Another plant which I have really struggled with uh, is the String of Pearls. Uh, and this was for both the variegated and the non-variegated form. And I know this is actually a really common experience. I am. This is the norm. Um, the string of pearls is a really beautiful plant. I love the little, the little round beads on it. I find it very aesthetically pleasing. I could imagine a beautiful trailing basket of it, but I cannot seem to keep it alive. Every time I get it, it either it gets too wet or it gets too dry. I can't find the balance of watering with this plant. And it is one that I would, I think, like to try again in the future but I'm nervous. I'm scared that I'm still gonna keep making this mistake and I don't wanna have like a graveyard of like string of pearls. That's not what I'm trying to get out of this. If I'm gonna get another one, I wanna be able to make sure that I at least have a plan and an approach to 
meet its care needs. So if you do have a string of pearls, please let me know what your experience is. If you have any tips, um, especially if you live in kind of the northern United States or in Canada or even in uh, northern parts of Europe, because I have a feeling part of it might be the light requirements. Um, so I know I just said watering, but here maybe I'm not giving it the direct light it needs. I'm not sure. But the string of pearls I have found very finicky and very difficult, and I know I'm not alone in that assessment, so would welcome any tips here. Next plant on my list is actually not a specific plant, isn't an entire genus, and that is orchid. Um, I cannot keep an orchid alive to save my life. Uh, my mom can. My mom has beautiful orchids. I cannot manage to do that. They look fine and then they rot from the base up. So I know it's a problem with the roots and the moisture, but I don't water them a lot. So why are they rotting on me? Now, I know that orchids actually encompass a wide variety and a lot of different types of plants. Uh, when I say orchid, I am specifically talking about the ones you can get at big box stores. Um, so ones that I have picked up from Ikea or ones that I have picked up from the grocery store, uh, just as kind of a path into trying to care for orchids. I'm wondering if maybe I should try and get um, some jewel orchids. I know that jewel orchids are really popular right now. Um, maybe I could try that. I'm just, I haven't been able to, I, again, it's the rotting. So it's something about the water. I know it probably means that I'm underwater, I'm overwatering, but how do I know when to water them? I can't seem to figure that out because so many of my other plants will show you when they need to be watered. Hoyas, their leaves will start to pucker. Um, alocasia, they're gonna start to droop. Anthurium, you're gonna start to see like rips in their leaves and things and crispy edges. So like most plants I can tell when they're gonna need water and that allows me to develop a system to prevent some of those negative uh, underwatering free features from happening. But with orchids, I don't have that knowledge and that system in place to begin with to learn from. So I feel like I'm just making a series of mistakes and just like shots in the dark trying to find the watering levels and frequency that they need. Uh, I know people talk about ice cubes and I know that that's an incredibly divisive area. Like some people are like, I just put in two ice cubes a week. And other people are like, why would you put in ice cubes? It's a tropical plant, it does not want ice. Um, I'm open to anything, you know, if it works, it works. Uh, the ice thing does seem a little weird to me, but hey, maybe it's something I should try. But um, yeah, orchids, uh, I've had, troubles with, but I would like to try them in the future. I really would like to see um, if I can manage to keep one alive. Now, we are on to the part of my list where I still have the plants, so I've managed to figure it out. But these are still plants that I have struggled with and I'm continuing to struggle with in some way. So you might notice a gap behind me. This one lives up on the shelf here. And this is my Fomatophyllum scrucianum. I believe it used to be known as Philodendron goldii. So this plant is one, again, that I have found attracts a lot of pests. Uh, I've had a lot of issues with uh, mites on it. And um, when I did have that thrips outbreak, this one had a couple on it as well. But I just, I really love the plant. I think it's so pretty. Um, so it's taken me a while. The roots have rotted on me so often. Um, it, I think this is partly because I thought it was a philodendron at first, so I started treating it like a philodendron, but it isn't. It's a fomatophyllum. And so I don't think it could handle the early underwatering as well as philodendron can. Now, I think I have just figured out the key to care to this plant. So you'll see this is the latest leaf. Look how pretty it is. Oh, so pretty. Um, and it's bright light. Fomatophyllum needs the bright light. Uh, or at least this one does. This is what I have found. And I have it in a clear vessel here and there's lots of roots. There's actually some coming up the bottom uh, in just an old takeout container. I've had some moss on top to increase the humidity. Again, I found this one does like a bit of extra humidity, but it's a beautiful plant. Uh, 
Yeah, it's just so pretty. Uh, and I have struggled with it in the past, but I'm hoping that this is the start of a new era of loving and caring for this plant and not having to constantly look at the leaves and be like, damn it, there's another pest. Um, we're past that now. I hope. I really, really hope. Look how big it is. Okay, so the last plant on my struggle bus list is still a struggle, but it is one that I do have. Uh, this is my very tiny, in a Starbucks cup, Monstera Thai Constellation. So it has really pretty leaves. Let's hope these ones stick around. So uh, this one I actually got before the whole price drop of Tycons happened, but I got this really cheap. Um, I got it at a uh, plant sale event uh, in downtown Toronto. I got it for a really good price. I got home, I took it out of its pot. Um, it was attached to a really nice chunk and all of the roots were dead. They were just fallen off, completely rotted. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's why it was a good price. Uh, it had one big leaf on it that shortly died. I had to reroot the entire plant and that took a while. And then the roots that came out of it. So after I had finally got it into a good place, those roots rotted and it had two baby leaves and they both yellowed and died. And now these are the two most recent leaves. It is pregnant. I don't think it's a big enough, uh, it isn't far enough along that you'd be able to see, but there is a new leaf coming out of this guy right here. Um, but the basically what would be the aerial root is the one that's actually in here doing well. So for the first time, I can actually see healthy roots in the bottom. Um, it's in a very, very chunky mix, uh, and there still are dead roots in here. Like I can see them. So. But it also, oh, this, this one looks healthy. There's like some healthy ones in there, like hidden around. I don't know, it's a very difficult uh, plant for me because it keeps rotting. And I do know that's an issue with Tycons in general. I have it in my greenhouse behind me, at least until it gets more established. Uh, and I'm more confident about the root system because right now I feel like if I did anything to change this one's conditions, that would be the end of it. And it's a shame because I really do want a beautiful big Tycon. Um, I love it way more than the Monstera Albo. I think it's a beautiful plant, especially when it's all speckledy like this. Like, I think that's so pretty. Um, but clearly she has needs and we gotta work hard to meet those needs. Which is her right. It's also my right to be a little annoyed about it. Um, so, you know, it's a struggle plant. I really am not sure what the future of this one is because I have had such negative experiences in the past, even though it currently looks to be doing well. From my experience, that doesn't mean much. That can change in an instant, uh, which is frustrating, but it also, there's not much I can do about it. All I can kind of do is try and meet the care that it needs right now and see what the future holds. So please keep your fingers crossed for me for this Tycon. Um, I have seen also some YouTubers using things like um, mycorrhizal inoculants, uh, di like kind of like Dynamico and some other ones. I think TPS, Great White, those are some of the big ones. And I have seen people talk about that they can be really good for helping strengthen root systems. But I've also read some uh, articles uh, from some like, like actual like scientific papers saying that it doesn't do much unless there are multiple plants in one pot because the purpose of when you think about mycorrhizal inoc or like mycorrhizae in general is they create networks under the ground like they're mushrooms right they're fungi they create networks under the ground so if there's multiple plants in a pot it'll create a symbiotic kind of relationship with those plants wherein if one gets too much moisture that moisture can kind of travel to the other plant that's my understanding of it. I am not a specialist. I want to do more research in this and actually read a few scholarly journals, a few example cases, but most of the success stories I have read with actual, actual hard data are from big nurseries, big growers, 
uh, wherein there are lots of plants sharing the same network, not a singular plant in one pot in like a houseplant collection. So maybe I'll try it. I have not decided yet, but either way, I want to do a lot of research uh, on the use of uh, fungi in houseplants. Uh, that's kind of on my special interests list uh, going into the spring. So thank you all for joining me for this video. Uh, it was a pretty quick one, a pretty short one, but as I said, I have a new camera coming. Uh, hopefully this is going to mean a few things. Higher quality videos, meaning that I can do big houseplant tours, really zoom in and show you some of these plants. Um, it's also going to mean that I can do a bit more longer form content and not have to worry about my phone battery dying. Uh, and I just really hope that it means that's going to allow me to kind of be a little bit more creative with the videos I put out there and just increase that quality so that you can kind of see the details of my collection a little bit more. Uh, but until then, I'm very glad you could join me today. Please, uh, if you don't have any suggestions for how to fix my uh, struggle situations, please comment down below uh, which other plants you've struggled with. Maybe I can give you some advice if I have done really well with those plants, or maybe I can take, uh, maybe I can have that in the back of my mind for when I look to buy plants in the future. It's always good to kind of share those tips, I think. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. And from my sleepy cat Bowie, say goodbye Bowie and myself. We will see you next time. Bye. Good boy. You said goodbye. Yeah.